I'm going to explain to you a little bit about RF modulators. Okay, RF modulators, what they are is basically an analog audio interface, okay? Now, it's the exact opposite of digital, which of course these days and for quite some time has always been the preferred method of getting audio to any kind of device that you have that you've got to listen to in it. For instance, that there is my iPod, okay? Now on the top of the iPod there is a 3.5 millimeter analog audio output jack. Now you could utilize that, you know, to, or 3.5 millimeter wire and put it into the front auxiliary input of a radio, uh, whether it be home or car, to hear your music, okay? Now, if you have a vehicle that doesn't have that feature, say if it's like your, uh, your daily driver or, you know, your old clunker that you drive around with used for work or whatever the case is, there's a, there's a ton of scenarios it could be in. Okay, so if your car does not have a factory equipment for an iPod or an external MP3 device, that's what I'm going to gear this video towards. But of course you can use this for a home application and a host of other applications, but basically this is how it works. My iPod is there, I have the 3.5 millimeter jack terminated with this adapter, it's a 3.5 millimeter to RCA adapter. Now this is basically what an RF modulator looks like. This is called a dual channel hardwired RF modulator. Now on the side there, there's a switch where you can select two different frequencies. This one works on 87.9 or 88.3. That's typically where you're going to find the range of, um, you know, transmission range on a RF modulator. It's going to be in the high 87s to the low 83s, I'd say. Typically, the reason why that is is because those are generally useless frequencies. There's no music transmit or broadcast on those stations as far as I know of, at least not around here in New York there isn't. Not that FM is even worth listening to anyway, but anyway. You got your cable feeding into the front audio input of RF. An RF modulator is going to have two leads, positive and negative, of course, to create any kind of power circuit. Now what I've done is I have this single, single pole switch, and what that does is it's going to interrupt the RF modulator to my car stereo I have here on my bench. It's my little old reliable Panasonic. It's been around a while. Okay, so anyway, this here is the antenna input to my Panasonic stereo. That is feeding to the output of my RF modulator. There's also another one right here, which is the audio input. This is going to come from the antenna in your car. Of course, I'm using this on a tension bend, so I have no business connecting it. But I actually did go upstairs and grab the antenna. So I hope you people appreciate it. I had to hold myself up there to go get that. But that's what that's for. We're not using it. So let me show you how this works. Right now my radio is tuned to 102.3. Yeah, baby. Okay. Now my switch is in the off position. Now watch, I'm going to turn it on. I don't know if you could tell, but the music is starting to sound bad. Okay. Now if it's off, and I tune my stations, it's going to tune and look for every station that there could be. If I take this switch, turn it on, now I start searching for frequencies. It's hard to see, I'm sorry with this camera. You see that? It automatically stopped at 87.9. So if I feed my iPod, hit play, now I'm listening to my sound. That's pretty clear. That's the difference between a wireless RF modulator that we're using here and a, and a wired. Wired and wireless, big difference. With a wireless, I mean, you can get all kinds of static, you can get bad transmission range, a host of problems. It can be very frustrating. You just want to take those things and throw them out the window. I've had so many bad experiences with those. But if you're going to try to do the job, try to do it halfway decent. You know, spend at least 20 bucks for crying out loud. Get yourself the RF modulator. Cable like this, we sell for like $2.50. So, you know, I think it's pretty affordable. And RF is 20 so you got about 25 bucks. A switch like this will run you a buck or two. So you're looking at about 30 bucks, and maybe a half an hour of your time, and that's pretty good, you know. I mean, you don't have to be all cheap about it like the switch that I'm using here. It's trying to 
kind of crappy looking switch you can get yourself a flush rocker switch or something a little bit nicer but then again if it's just your old you know whatever kind of car throw this under the dash and who's going to really care but this is a great economical way to use an RF modulator I've had a lot of good experiences using them and that's really all there is to it RFs are not that complicated and they're underrated even in today's world you know some of these cars and stuff that comes out you would think that they come with this iPod integration, but some of them just don't. And when they don't, you can do something like this, pick it up, and make your problems go away. Sounds good to me. And I got a couple others that I brought. They all look pretty much the same. This is a ProVision, single channel. Same kind of thing, two, two frequency settings. Ground loop isolator built in, which is good, so it gets rid of alternator wine if you have that problem. Even comes with a 15 foot RCA, it's nice. These work not just for audio like I'm using right here on the bench, but you can use this for mobile video systems. So if you have a flip down TV, headrest TVs, this works awesome. You know, that's the packaging from this one I'm using on the bench. And this here, I also brought out, this is a Kenwood multi CD changer player RF modulator. You can see, no surprise, the same thing antenna in, antenna out. You got your power here, here, and here, but this one here would connect to an external LCD display to control it. In my scenario, I'm using this as my controller. This plus my switch. So, RF modulators, not too bad.